My name is Bryce Winfrey, and uh, I've been help, helping out with the Texas Tech wool judging team for the past few years. And today I'm going to describe a, a little bit about how to judge wool for FFA in high school. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. It breaks down into three different components. The first being rel, the second being classes, and the last being questions. Um, so first off, I'll start with rel. And how this works is within rel, you have to, just, you have to be able to uh, evaluate a fleece on three different things in a minute in a minute's time. Uh, the first thing that you have to evaluate is the blood grain. Um, so what the blood grade is is it's the fineness of the fleece. Um, these break down into four different categories: either fine, half, three eighths, or quarter. And so to get a little bit of an idea of what those differences are, as you can see here, that we have here we have a fine. Um, when you look at that, the crimp is very small. Um, you also that you look at the individual fiber diameter, and you'll notice that uh, the crimp and the fiber is very very small in, its, in terms of its circumference, and also the actual feel of the of the of the lock is um, very soft. Then you move on to what a half blood is, and you notice that the crimp is a little bit bolder. You can actually see the different waves throughout the lock. When you pull apart the fleece, you notice that the individual fibers are a little bit bigger around um, than the fine fleece. But at the same time, the lock is still pretty soft. Um, it still has got a, a good, firm, fresh touch. And the next one we have here is a 3 8 um, These are browsier fleeces. Um, they don't have very much noticeable crimp whatsoever. The actual individual fiber is pretty bold. Um, however, um, it can really mistake the eye unless you have some experience of noticing the feel and the touch of a 3 8 which is going to be just very harsh to the touch. Um, and very frowsy. And then lastly, you have the quarter. And the quarter is more of a hair like, um, like a horse hair. Um, it's extremely, extremely coarse. The individual fibers are very, very large. Um, when, you touch the, when you touch the lock, it feels more like an angora goat rather than an actual uh, wool sheep. Um, so you just notice that this is a very coarse, coarse fleece um, that has very coarse locks in it. So that's what you do on the rail. And so that, you, that's the first distinction you have to make when you walk up to the fleece, whether you have a fine, a half, a three-eighths, or a quarter. After that, you then have to determine the stable length. And how this works is you have you have different lengths of the lock. Um, you have, first you have what we call a staple, which is what it is the optimal call. Um, a, sta a staple call is good. It meets the length requirements when it goes to the wool warehouse and allows it to continue through the carding and combing process. Next, you have French combing. This is a lock um, that is a little too short to meet um, premium requirements, uh, but at the same time, it's not short enough to be completely discounted. And thirdly, you have clothing. Well, I can smell clothing, right? Um, lastly, clothing is a very short lock. So if you look at this individual lock here from a fine standpoint, if this lock was only about that long from my, about the separation between my two fingers there, that would be what a clothing lock is. French would be about that long, and then a, obviously a staple call is that entire length of that lock. Um, so once you determine that, you then move on into yield. And what yield is, is it's percent clean wool. Um, percentage of clean wool in, in relation to the dirt that's in the actual fleece. You have a high call, a medium call, and a low call. Low is bad, has a lot of dirt in it. Medium is about, it's about uh, appropriate. Um, it's got a little bit more grease, a little bit more dirt, but at the same time, it's not overbearing. And then lastly, high is it's practically non-existent from a grease and dirt standpoint. Um, this is, you, will, uh, you are offered a premium when you have a higher yielding fleece, as obviously you have more total wool. So next week, you go into classes. Um, so how classes work is you have four fleeces that are either commercial or breeding. This is very similar to livestock um, from a uh, placing class standpoint. You have commercial classes, which are ready, you're, uh, you're judging them on an uh, economic uh, decision. And then breeding classes is you're trying to imagine what their offspring is going to bring and keep that in mind when you're placing your class. Um, but obviously, our number one priority when placing classes is weight. 
um, this counts for about 95% of your decision. And then secondly, you probably have yield, which counts for about 4% of your decision. And then lastly, you have statement. Um, so uh, the heavy, heaviest weight fleece goes first, the lightest weight fleece goes last. Um, but sometimes you have a yield call when two fleeces are exactly the same. You have to be able to adjust and, and realize how which fleece is going to have more total clean wool. Um, and then lastly, you have to have a staple, uh, appropriate staple length. If the fleece does not need staple, um, then obviously it, it, it's discounted in, in a, it goes to the wool warehouse, which allows it to be of less value. Um, so from a commercial standpoint, all three of these are uh, used in making your placing decision. Um, from a breeding standpoint, it's mainly just weight. Um, but instead of yield, you actually have character. Um, in this situation, a character call is a fleece that's of just a good quality. Um, it's a fleece that has a good, bold, distinct crimp that is uniform throughout. Um, it's one that is not too greasy, not too dirty. Um, it's one that just has all the color, the crimp, the condition, uh, what you want in an ideal fleece. Um, so really weight is your driving force and a character is also a determining factor from a breeding standpoint. So that pretty much wraps up your classes. You have four classes within a placing, within, within a contest. And then lastly, you have questions. Um, this is the equivalent to what would be reasons on the collegi collegiate level. Um, and what these questions are gonna range from is anything from which one's the longest staple? Shortest staple? You also have the highest yielding. Low, you also have highest yielding, lowest yielding, uh, most pounds of clean wool, least pounds of clean wool, then at the same time you have vegetable matter, vegetable matter, you also have, uh, you have uh, tags, which is uh, stain wool, and then you have the fiber strength question, which is looking at the individual lock and determining how strong that lock is. Um, so longest staple is obviously which lock's longest, shortest is obviously which one's the shortest. Uh, yield is the percentage of clean wool in the fleece. Um, then you have a clean wool, which one's the most pounds of clean wool, least pounds of clean wool. Vegetable matter, you're looking at straw, uh, you're looking at different types of hay, um, you're looking at pine, um, you're looking at anything, grass burrs, multiple things like that. Um, stain wool is going to be manure and urine stains, and then also your yeah, fiber strength is when you actually take the individual lock here and uh, grab it on both ends and see how strong the fiber is. As you can see, this this lock is pretty tender fiber. So that pretty much wraps up in how the contest works. Um, again, the most important part is um, to be able to analyze different grades and then be able to adjust for the factors from a yield standpoint, stable standpoint, because they're all they all they're all different. Um, I advise you, if you're interested in wool judging, to uh, go to texasfa.org and you can find more information about how the entire contest works. And, uh, and best wishes to 